Hi, I'm Tammy Marinuzzi, and I'm going to show you um, today pillow people or some clothes forms. Um, I'm going to work with some uh, earthenware here, and I'm going to roll it out into thin slabs, and I'm going to use them really similarly um, as you would use coils. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out some really thin slabs, probably about a quarter of an inch thick at the most and then I'm going to compress. I'm going to compress the the top and I'm going to compress the bottom and this does a couple of things. It allows the clay to be a little bit more flexible when I'm building with it and it smooths out the the canvas texture that's going on here. I'm throwing on just a, a board with some canvas on it and I don't want those marks to show so I'm going to just compress the surface, take out the air bubbles, and take out the canvas um, marks. And this, a, a size this big, this was probably about two pounds, maybe three pounds of clay, should make a whole form. You don't need a lot of clay to make this. I do a lot of untraditional, I guess, things. I don't score, I don't slip, um, I don't do measurements, I don't do templates. Um, because it's going to allow me to really have an expressive form. These forms will get wonky, they'll kind of take on their own nature when I'm building them. So what I'm going to do is just, I took one slab and I just cut it into a strip and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep cutting this one slab into um, strips and the strips you'll see here are no thicker than a, a quarter inch thick. The clay, as you see, by compressing it, it allows it to be really flexible and malleable. I'm working with pretty soft clay. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I'm not gonna have to score and slip. But what I can say is that I'm going to continuously pinch and work this like it was a coil. So even though I'm not scoring and slipping, what I'm doing is by pressing, I'm pressing the clay together, making sure that those seams are out. There's a little seam in here and I'm just going to take my fingers and rub that seam on out right now. The reason for that is that I'm going to grow this. I'm going to build it taller and taller and my fingers aren't going to be able to go down in there really soon. So I kind of have to take out any of the inside roughness or seaming that I don't want to see when I open the container. Also what I'm going to do is I'm also going to start giving this some form. I'm going to start pushing it from the out, uh, inside to out. Okay, so I'm starting to kind of shape it. I make the slabs a little bit thicker than I want them to end up in the, um, so that it gives me a little flexibility. So the next thing that I do is I'm going to flip this over and squeeze these together to make sure that there's a nice seal here that this isn't going to come apart. And I'm going to put the the foot on here. And I don't do a tripod. I do. I kind of do um, these little four four footed containers. I like to do that. It makes them. It gives them little feet. So how I do that is I just pinch the clay on both sides. And I'm not concerned with it being. Um, even, I'm not concerned with the seam showing. That's part of what gives the work the character that I like. So I'm not lining things up, I'm not being real exact, but that really feeds into the character of the work. I wanna get that bottom in there because I put it on the interior and not on the exterior. And the reason for that is I like the seam work that when you can see how it's made, I don't, I'm not interested in it being a surprise how it's made. I like all those flaws showing. Um, if you look on the inside, you're going to see that the, the open area is probably about an inch and an inch and a half. And I'm going to make the square that I'm going to stick in there, um, I'm going to make it a little bigger. And one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to call pooching. And I call it pooching out. So I'm going to pooch this out a little bit so that it has a nice little dome to it. So when I put it on the interior, it's going to pooch out of that space. So I'm just going to stick this in there again without any 
um, scoring or slipping. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my finger and run it along the seam. And I'm just going to fill in the cracks with extra clay. Now remember, this is a little bit thinner than this is because I've gone in now and I stretched the clay. So I'm going to try to make this little square that I put in there, I'm going to try to make it the same thickness. And I'm constantly, with these fingers, I'm always going like this and kind of checking the thickness because as you know, you want your walls to be even in thickness. And then I'm going to come back to this seam and I'm just going to take my finger and press it down and then I'll come back over here and just kind of push from the inside out again. Make sure that, because I'm moving it so much, I want to make sure that it's keeping its form. Now right in this area, right in this little belly, I have extra clay and I'm going to take that extra clay and really poof it out. Because that's going to be, you know, a chin or a stomach and I want it to kind of stick out into space. Now I don't pre-conceptualize a lot of this stuff. I don't sit down and say, ooh, I want to build this. I mean, I'm obviously building a jar, um, but I don't know what face or what figure is going to go on there. And I really do let the clay um, kind of speak to me in that way. If I see cracks that look like they would be, um, you know, a nice mouth or eyes or nose, I let the clay kind of determine that. So right now what I'm doing is the corner spaces are always a little bit more difficult to get into so I'm just going to um, fill with really soft clay. I just have a little bucket here with some slop and I'm going to take that slop and put it kind of into the corners and fill up the, the little corners. So one of the things I'm going to do is you'll notice that this is a little thick. I'm going to pinch this out just a little bit, make it a little thinner. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do on this side, after I make that thinner, is I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to rub it on the edge of this. And this will make this thinner too. So these, both of these seams, when they meet, they're about as thick as one of these together. So now I have my, my basic form. I'm going to turn this upside down and then I'm just going to squeeze these a little bit more and push this down and I'm not going to worry about how the clay is moving. Um, I'm just going to push it out. I can fix that later if I don't like the gesture or the form of it. I can fix that later on with the paddle tool. But I want to make sure that these are have a little height because it props my piece up and gives it a little attitude with those little feet. So I have my next um, layer that I'm going to put on there. And remember, I made this a lot thinner, right? So you can see that this now is is a really thin lip, and then this is, in comparison to that, this is a lot thinner. So what I'm going to do is just take this and feed it on the inside, kind of if you were working on a coil when you build up with a coil, and I'm just going to tear that. I'm going to stick that in there, and I'm just going to compress this with my fingers. I'm going to just pinch. So, now I'm going to leave some of these seams, like I said, because those are going to become body parts, and they're going to catch some of this wash that I'm going to put on afterwards. So I like those seams to be evident. I don't want to hide those. So I'm just going to put this on here and I'm just going to pinch. And so although I'm not scoring and slipping, I'm really compressing the clay at this seam line and making sure that it's going to stick together. I can choose at this point if I want the seams on the inside because sometimes I like how the glaze on the inside catches in the seams on the inside too. So for today I'm going to smooth those seams up just a little bit. And now I'm using this paddle stick. And I'm, although it sounds kind of loud, I'm not really hitting it all that loud. I'm just hitting it enough to make this flush with that. So this top piece, I want it flush with the bottom. 
So at this point, I can kind of start seeing, I'm going to have to start working the form just a little bit, you know. Um, so I see that this clay is coming out a little bit in the, in the back, so it's going to be a nice butt for the piece. So I'm going to just work that right now because my hands can still fit in that. And I'm just going to kind of do a, this motion. I'm just going to kind of make little scooping motions and give it a little, either a belly, maybe it looks more like a belly. I'm thinking it's like a belly or a face. Kind of sometimes the bellies go into the faces in my piece, so that's thinking about that relationship. And then if this is extending far out into space, then I kind of want this to extend just a little bit. I don't want it to read really flat, because right now it's, it's kind of flat. And although some folks look like that, let's give mine a little, a little junk in the trunk, I guess. So I, when I put my original coil on, or what I call coils, really a rolled out slab, um, I put it on the inside, and there's definitely a reason for doing that. Um, when you put the coil on the inside, then it's going to make the shape go in, right? And that's what I'm interested in. I want this to go in. If I were to put it on the outside, then it would get larger. So you can do that. You can intentionally make those decisions. If you're going to work larger, though, if you want it to come back out into space now, then you would probably take this slab, cut it in half, and <clears throat> put it on the outside. Because when you're building out, obviously, because of gravity, you have to work a little bit slower um, or a little bit more slowly. I'm going to thin out this edge a little bit. I like to pinch and go. Now, I need to take that in consideration. Everybody's uh, slabs are going to be a little bit different because the length of your fingers are different. So I know for me, this is a really nice size slab. It's really workable because when I put my fingers in here, I can still pinch and I still have control. This slab was a little bit longer, but this strip was longer that I wouldn't be able to get my hands down in there to work. So I need to take that into consideration to my fingers and how that's going to work. So I'm going in a little bit with this. I'm still pinching. I'm just going to pinch, 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 pinch. And right now I'm seeing, originally this was a belly, but it's kind of dipping in right here. And now this is kind of looking like a face. So I'm probably going to make a chin and a forehead over here is now what I'm thinking. It's looking this way to me now. 